Bill Gates' visit to China in mid-June this year has attracted a lot of public attention. He was the first U.S. celebrity from politics and business to meet with the Chinese president this year. Recently, the ups and downs in China-U.S. relations have kept the world on edge. People are curious about the implications of this meeting and why it's Bill Gates, of all people, who's given such priority. We might find some clues in their conversations. During the meeting, the Chinese leader specifically praised the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for its efforts in global poverty reduction, health care, uh, development, and philanthropy. They convey the willingness to continue collaborating with the foundation, providing all possible support and assistance to other developing countries. I remembered the discussion with Bill Gates back in 2011 about the goals and operation of the foundation. Well, I certainly saw that passing large sums of wealth on the children was quite damaging in terms of their self-motivation, uh, self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You know, so not good for them and, and not good for society either because those resources weren't being used in the, in the best way. Eventually, we'd find some way to uh, have those resources uh, help the people most in need. So was there a kind of revealing moment which turned you from the most successful capitalist into the successful philanthropist? Well, my family uh, was somewhat religious, and so the idea of uh, giving back uh, comes from that philosophy. Mm. Also, um, my parents both volunteered a great deal, and so I got to see the agencies helping the blind people, helping various peoples in need. It was amazing to see the creativity. How are you different from this older generation of philanthropists? What are something new that you bring into philanthropy? Today, I think we can be a little better about measuring the outcomes of How the things so? we do. I think successful companies can to reinforce their values and be an attractive company that young people want to go there and work. They can think about, could they try extra for the needs of the poorest without taking away uh, most of their work being very profit-driven, price-driven. Recently, the Bill and the Melinda Gates Foundation has been highly acclaimed for its immense contribution towards terminating the COVID-19 with a donation of 1.75 billion US dollars just in the year of 2020. Moreover, Bill Gates himself announced in July 2022 that he would donate all his fortune in the future. These actions have received extensive praise, but also faced with some scrutiny, with skeptics questioning whether charity can truly make a difference to the world. In fact, ever since Bill Gates set up the foundation, he has found himself at the focus of many divergent opinions. Looking back at our conversation, it's clear that he has been grappling with these questions for many years. In this country, people are naturally suspicious and even sometimes cynical towards anything that powerful. And now here again in the field of philanthropy, you can't avoid controversies because you're too big, too powerful. You can't avoid controversy, but the positive feeling towards the foundation is also quite amazing to me. I mean, people are super nice about the work we're doing. But was there a moment where you felt that you are not capable enough to make more significant changes and impact? By focusing on some innovations, you can have a, a surprisingly dramatic effect. And we've had enough success that, no, I've never been discouraged. I, uh, individual projects may have gone poorly, but mm. they, the foundation, you know, we've already saved millions of lives, and that, that alone uh, makes us feel good about our work. Do you remain as an optimist uh, to the future of human beings uh, after you have seen so much sufferings, poverty, devastating you know, uh, realities around the world? Well, the realities in some ways are quite positive. You know, 300 years ago, uh, the death rate, the you know, people lived to the age of about 35. They didn't learn to read. Mm. It was terrible. And of course, women were not, not allowed to work <laughs> at that time. Yeah, well, 50 years ago, 20 million year children a year died, and now we're down to less than 9 million. So when I see the chance to use science, 
whether it's, that's a vaccine or a new seed, uh, on behalf of everyone, uh, I get very optimistic. You're a believer in the fact that technology is transforming our future in a better way. Yes, and it will naturally do that for the people who are well off. And with a little bit of help, it'll do it for everyone. You know, my career at this point is about uh, harnessing the power of science and innovation uh, to speed up progress uh, in all these ways. It means a lot of uh, collaboration. It means uh, a lot of open science. Uh, it means uh, really understanding the, the problems uh, better. Uh, we're excited that we'll get to come and visit and work in an even more intense way uh, with global partners now. Uh, and so it's going to be great, exciting to see how the innovations here and at other places in China can help advance global progress in the years to come. Thank you. Coming back to the question we started with, why is Bill Gates taking on such a pivotal role at this crucial moment? Perhaps it's because his impact extends beyond the 50 billion US dollars already donated by the foundation and his pledge to give away more of his personal fortune. His influence also lies in the fact that he's making philanthropy more inclusive and cooperative. Just as he emphasizes, it's only when we all get involved in tackling the global challenges that we stand a chance at achieving a win-win and ultimate victory. <laughs>